Coming up on 5-Minute News. U.S. administers over 380 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. George W. Bush warns of danger from domestic terrorists on 9-11 anniversary. And Taliban say women can study at university, but classes must be segregated. It's Monday, September 13. I'm Anthony Davis. The United States has administered 380,241,903 doses of COVID-19 vaccines in the country as of yesterday morning and distributed 456 million doses, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said. The agency said over 209 million people had received at least one dose, while 178 million people are fully vaccinated as of yesterday. The CDC tally includes two-dose vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer, as well as Johnson & Johnson's one-shot vaccine. About 1.78 million people received an additional dose of either Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine since August 13, when the US authorized a third dose of the vaccines for people with compromised immune systems, who are likely to have weaker protection from the two-dose regimens. Three U.S. studies suggest COVID-19 vaccines offer strong protection against hospitalization and death, even in the face of the highly transmissible Delta variant. But vaccine protection appears to be waning among older populations, especially among those 75 and over. U.S. data on hospitalization from nine states during the period when the Delta variant was dominant also suggests that the Moderna vaccine was more effective at preventing hospitalizations among individuals of all ages than vaccines from Pfizer or J&J. In that study of more than 32,000 visits to urgent care centers, emergency rooms and hospitals, Moderna's vaccine was 95% effective at preventing hospitalization, compared with 80% for Pfizer and 60% for J&J. Overall, the findings released in the US CDC's weekly report on death and disease shows that vaccines continue to offer strong protection from COVID-19. On the 20th anniversary of the deadliest attack on U.S. soil, George W. Bush, who was president at the time, warned of a new danger coming from within the country. We have seen growing evidence that the dangers to our country can come not only across borders, but from violence that gathers within, Bush said at the 9-11 memorial site in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, during a ceremony to mark the anniversary of the September 11 attacks. There is little cultural overlap between violent extremists abroad and violent extremists at home. They are children of the same foul spirit, and it's our continuing duty to confront them, he said. The United States has seen an uptick in homegrown terror threats in recent years, particularly from white supremacists capped by the deadly January 6 attack on the U.S. Capitol by followers of Republican former President Donald Trump. Bush, recalling the unity of the American people after the attacks, appealed for a return to that spirit amid growing political division in the country. When it comes to unity of America, those days seem distant from our own, the former president said. Malign force seems at work in our common life. So much of our politics has become a naked appeal to anger, fear and resentment. Former President Trump did not attend any formal 9-11 events on Saturday. Women in Afghanistan will be allowed to study in universities as the country seeks to rebuild after decades of war. But gender segregation and Islamic dress code will be mandatory, the Taliban's new higher education minister said on Sunday. The minister, Abdul Baki Haqqani, said the new Taliban government, named last week, would start building the country on what exists today and did not want to turn the clock back 20 years to when the movement was last in power. He said female students would be taught by women wherever possible and classrooms would remain separated in accordance with the movement's interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. The issue of women's education has been one of the central questions facing the Taliban as they seek to persuade the world that they have changed since the harsh fundamentalist rule they imposed in the 1990s when women were largely banned from studying or working outside the home. 
Taliban officials have said women will be able to study and work in accordance with Sharia law and local cultural traditions, but strict dress rules will apply. Haqqani said hijab religious veils would be mandatory for all female students, but did not specify if this meant headscarves or compulsory face coverings. On Saturday, a group apparently made up of women students in black robes that covered them completely from head to foot demonstrated in Kabul in support of the rules on dress and separate classrooms. Haqqani said where no women teachers were available, special measures would be adopted to ensure separation. You can subscribe to 5 Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5 Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5 Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news. Daily.